Hey guys, thanks for coming back and watching another video. So today we're talking about soil pH and more specifically how to measure your soil pH. So I'm going to go through many, many tips. I'm going to try to go through 50 or more tips and tricks about measuring soil pH and what is the ideal way to make your garden flourish by knowing the pH and how important it can be. So generally speaking, plants require a soil pH of 7 or close to 7, but some can require more acidity or more alkalinity and that's why testing your pH can be so important. If you do your research on each plant you put into your garden and see what its specific requirements are, you'll be able to help that plant to do its absolute best and ultimately produce more vegetables and fruits for you along the way. Now soil pH meters can vary drastically in price. If you want a high-end very professional soil pH meter you're talking about two to three hundred dollars and maybe even more. This soil pH meter that I'm using, I'm very happy with it, but I've read a lot of reviews on it before I purchased it. This was around $20 to $30. So that's what I'm saying is it, depending on what your needs are, the average gardener can get along something, can get along with something fine like this. Now, in order to get the best possible reading, you want the soil to be moist, but not soggy or not saturated. So you might water the day before, or if you're taking a midday reading, water it in the morning and let the soil drain just a bit because moisture is good but sogginess will give you an inaccurate reading on your pH meter. Now one thing to remember you always want to clean your soil pH meter after every use and you just use a wet a damp or a wet paper towel and just wipe it down gently very gently uh, especially the tip because this part can come easy, become easily damaged so you want to make sure that you clean it but do it in a very gentle fashion. Always remember that you don't throw this part away you're tip cover you're going to put it back on there and store it in a cool dry place and just make sure that it's safe wherever you put it because this is what's going to help your garden bloom throughout the summer is this little device here okay so the thing to remember here is you want your meter at least four to six inches into the soil to get an accurate reading now depth of the soil also will change your ph so remember as you're putting it in there you want to let it sit there for 30 seconds to a minute and let it take the reading. So it doesn't do it instantly. It's going to take 30 seconds to one minute. Now another word about measuring your pH at different depths. You want to go around your plants and take measurements at different depths. You may want to go deeper than six inches or a little bit more shallow. So just remember you're just taking a variety of measurements around there so you can get an overall general assessment of what the pH is around that plant and whatever that plant requires that's what you want to do you want to either try to raise or lower the ph based upon that now for adjusting the ph of your soil you want to do that very carefully you want to just slightly do it a little at a time lightly sprinkle either of the following ingredients just a little so you can change the ph you don't want to shock your plant with a sudden massive ph change so for acidic soil you're going to sprinkle lime very lightly on the soil a little at a time and then keep doing your testing to sit, make sure you're adjusting the pH ever so carefully. So for alkaline soil, you're going to add elemental sulfur to do that change there, but do it just a little at a time so you don't shock the plant. Now to stabilize and buffer the soil, you'll want to add something like black cow or a compost to the soil once every season. So that will stabilize it and make the pH more balanced. Okay, so consider upgrading to a digital meter. This one in itself takes four different readings, light, temperature of the soil, pH, and moisture. So this one is a great addition to your vegetable garden and it'll help you do more interesting things and it's really got it's got a cool backlight. I love that. Now one way you can calibrate your pH meter is by taking some sphagnum peat moss, lightly moisten it, let it dry a little bit, and then use it inside of this. Maybe a larger container than this one, but this is for just demonstration purposes. Sphagnum peat moss should have a pH of around 3.5 and that way you can test it and make sure it's, it's calibrated and it's working accurately. The other way you can do it is if you have other pH meters, take the other pH meters you have and do the same thing in the same soil at the same depth. That way you'll know if your new pH meter is accurate. Now one thing you'll definitely want to do with your pH meter, if you have a large garden, you're going to want to take multiple readings from different areas. Even if you use the same soil or you, you consider that you have the same soil, you want to test different beds in different areas of the garden so you can get an overall idea of what your pH is. Testing one small area is not going to be enough. Now one thing to know that's very important is rainwater is slightly acidic and it can change your readings. So if it's recently rained the day of that you're taking your meter readings, make sure you wait till the following day till the soil has had a chance for that rainwater to settle and it can stay, the pH has gone, gone back to its normal level. So 
like I said, rainwater can definitely change your pH. So don't take a reading on the day where you've had a heavy rain. Now, another thing that can definitely change the pH in your soil is recently fertilizing it. That can definitely skew the results. So remember, if you've recently fertilized, wait until maybe a week after because that can definitely skew your results and you can totally think you have one pH when you have another. Now if you have more than one pH meter you might want to take readings with both of them but even from those two you can have an inaccurate reading so you might want to consider purchasing a paper test kit and I'll link that as well. I think that's the great way to do it is if you think that your meters are not accurate go on go back to a paper test that way with the little strips you have and that might work better. I'll link that as well so you can just make sure that your meter, pH meter, is working accurately. Now it is a good idea to schedule monthly pH readings in your garden. That way you can catch an imbalance before it gets out of control. So monthly readings are really going to help you benefit, help benefit you and know your garden better. Now some plants can become diseased as a result of an imbalanced pH. So that's a good idea to make sure you are testing and also research that particular plant, vegetable, fruit, whatever it is, vine, whatever you have, and if it's out of whack with the pH or it's out of balance with the pH, you're going to want to make sure that the pH gets corrected before you have a disease. Now one thing to remember is the tips of these pH probes can be very, very easily damaged, so you want to be very gentle when you press it into the soil. So just do it very lightly. If you're having to force, you may want to go back and loosen up the soil just a little bit, because if you damage your pH meter, it's not going to work anymore. Now one thing to remember, depending on where you live, that can kind of give you an idea of what your soil probably is already like. Sandy soils tend to be more acidic and clay soils tend to be more alkaline. So that kind of gives you a starting point to know what to look for when you start working with your pH meter. Now blueberries love acidic soil, so you'll want to plant your whatever you're planting in that soil type or you're going to need to do those amendments to change it. So have you ever seen a blueberry bonsai? Well, there's one. Another thing to remember about these digital pH meters is they are you generally, and this one is not, generally not waterproof. So you don't want water getting up into the system there and ruining your new digital pH meter. Water is okay below this point, but water inside of the electronics, it's not like our new smartphones where they're becoming more and more waterproof. So remember, don't let this portion right here, wipe it with a slightly damp cloth and make sure you don't let water get into the system there, which will ruin the computer inside. One other thing, if you like my owl, I'll put a link in the description. That keeps the chipmunks from eating my tomatoes. So many vegetables like these tomatoes require a slightly acidic soil. For instance, these really do well in 6.5 to 7.0. So it's a little bit on the acidic side. So that's what you want to shoot for when you're testing your soil. Know what plant requires which acidity level or alkaline level. So it's very rare to find a pH reading of extremely low or extremely high. But if your soil is such a soil, you might want to consider raised beds like these where you bring in your own quality soil or you make your own. I'll link a video to how to make your own topsoil. And so that way you'll be in complete control of the pH and your vegetables will love you for it. Now, as I said earlier, rainwater tends to be slightly more acidic than tap water. So if you want to keep your vegetables at their optimum growing and producing and consider rainwater harvesting that will help your entire garden and it's more natural and you don't have to worry about any unwanted chemicals in the water so guys we are losing daylight fast let's go into the greenhouse and we'll finish up with a rapid fire session on everything else i can think of about ph okay if you're having consistent problems getting your ph where you think it should be, consider having a professional analysis done. You can mail those in and there's a lot of labs where you can do that. It can become very expensive. So if you, that's a last ditch effort, I would say. So I would try that only if you can't find a pH meter that you feel is working right and your plants are having a lot of problems. Now, no pH meter is perfect, whether it's very old or very new you're going to have to realize that even the most expensive pH meter is not going to give you an exact reading. And sometimes even labs cannot give you a perfect reading depending on the quality of the lab. So that's one thing to remember is that there are limitations, but it'll give you a good idea of what's going on in your soil. Now it is possible that sunlight itself could change the pH of your soil. And so you might consider some shade fabric, cardboard or something to cover that area for a few hours, maybe overnight, 
and into the next day, and then you can go back and check at the end of the day. Now, not only can sunlight change the pH of your soil, but the soil being very cold can also alter the pH. So you may want to wait till midday if the soil is really cold, if it's an early spring day or late fall day, you might want to do that if you're testing at that time to get the optimal reading. So wait till the soil is a little bit warmer. And like as with this one, you can actually do a soil temperature on it. Now, concrete itself could alter your pH. So you want to test your soil away from concrete at least two to three feet, as that itself can change the pH of your soil. Now, if you know the soil in your area is very low quality, you might want to consider buying a large quantity of soil from a big box store or making your own because that can make or break your garden. If you have really good soil to start with, it can save you a lot of headaches. And the prepackaged soils usually have a stabilized pH or a known pH already in the soil that's ready to go for a vegetable garden or most plants for that matter. Now, if you need to acidify your soil just a little bit and you want to do it slowly, used coffee grounds are a great way to do that. They can acidify the soil and do it in a much slower way than some of the other methods. Now, in addition to coffee grounds to acidify the soil, you can also use pine needles to do the same thing, and you can buy it in bulk from the big box store or a garden center. So that's another way of slowly acidifying the soil is by putting a layer of mulch made from pine straw. Now, plants themselves can show signs of a pH imbalance. If you're seeing a lot of yellowing leaves, it could be a nutrient-induced lockout and that could be caused by the pH being off. So you want to go back to the plant you have, find out its preferred pH, and amend the soil either way, acidify or, or more alkaline, if I can get that out there. Now, pH meters only have a certain lifespan, and they can lose their calibration over time. For instance, I don't have any faith in this pH meter because it's over 20 years old, and that's why I purchased a new one. So that's something you want to consider doing, that if your pH meter has gotten over 5 or 10 years old and you don't think it's accurate, Go ahead and buy another one and that'll save you a lot of headache, especially since they've become so cheap and you can have them at your house in a matter of days from Amazon. Now your soil pH can change from season to season. So you'll want it at the beginning of the growing season, you're gonna want to take readings in all the areas where you're planting at the beginning of that growing season. And that's gonna ensure that you're the most accurate you can possibly be with your pH in that area. Now aeration can also help with your soil. If you'll take a heavy duty garden rake and turn the soil over, that can help quite a bit and kind of even out the pH in that area. So it's a lot of work, but it can really help your vegetables grow much better. Now the pH in potted plants can change much more quickly than open ground pH or even raised beds. So you want to monitor those more frequently and take notes as to what that pH is in the potted plant and just make sure that it doesn't get out of control because your plant can suddenly die and you'll think maybe overwatering, underwatering, it could be just that the pH is off and it needs certain soil amendments to correct that imbalance. So the best piece of advice someone ever gave me about monitoring pH in your vegetable garden was to make a diagram on the first page of a notebook of your garden, date it, and then put all the pH points in that diagram. And then as each season passes or each time you take a pH reading, write down the new pH readings for your meter and then put the date at the top right corner and then over time you can see where the pH is changing that will help you quite a bit because you'll be able to see patterns much more easily. So a lot of people want to know what does pH stand for and that stands for potential hydrogen. You're basically testing for potential hydrogen in the soil and so that's what a pH meter is. Hey guys so I just want to say thanks so much for watching. I know this has been a little bit dry because a lot of people don't really care about pH in your soil but it is truly a very important thing if you want your vegetable garden to flourish. So anyways, I hope you'll like and subscribe. And if you found something interesting, let me know. And if I said something you think is inaccurate, please leave me a comment down below because I'm always in the process of learning. There's no such thing as a master gardener, I think. I think you're always learning. Have a great day.